Hi, hello, good evening, dear digital world, and welcome to Luxus Cheap Films uh, Festival live discussion with the authors. So we started our festival last week uh, with the youngest participants of our um, festival, so with Luxus Youth and Youth Spirit uh, program sections, and we're heading off with full force this week. But if you're new here and you don't know what's going on, let me do a short recap. So you're watching the 18th edition of Luxus Cheap Films Festival and actually the first edition ever that is held online because you probably heard that there is a little something going on in the world, you know, called pandemic. So we decided to move our festival into a digital uh, format this year. Uh, it's a huge challenge, but we're really glad that you're here. And in the next two weeks, uh, this is the length of the festival, we prepared more than 40 low budget uh, short films for you, all created in a non-commercial or in a non-institutional context by authors between the ages of 10 uh, to 35 from 10 different countries. So I am pretty sure that there is something for everyone. So today is the second uh, Q&A of our festival. And the section of the program today is called Disaster Times. So this program is dedicated to recent, like a half a year on this planet, uh, reflecting changes that uh, happened and uh, what came with them. So how people deal with this um, upcoming, like feelings of panic, stress, isolation, and also how um, basically it connects us all together um, uh, as well. So these films were made during lockdown. Uh, or are about lockdown. So it's definitely something that we can discuss, these special shooting conditions for sure. Uh, and all of these movies were just screened on our YouTube channel an hour, an hour ago. So if you watch them, great, then your memory is fresh. But if you hadn't, haven't watched them, don't worry. Uh, they're gonna be online until the end of the festival. So until the 22nd of November. Uh, so you can always rewatch them. So please, if you haven't watched them, stay here, don't go anywhere. And I'm sure um, I am, I bet it will pay off. Um, so who is with us uh, here today? Uh, let me do a short introduction as well. So my name is Spela. I am one of the volunteers here at Luxus produ uh, Production. production. Uh, and uh, here with me, I'm gonna be moderating like all of these live discussions during throughout the whole festival. And with me today here are also two of my fellow uh, volunteering buddies. So Rojana and Tiffan and they will be leading the Q&A uh, portion of this video. So, uh, of course, it wouldn't be a discussion if we didn't have any guests. So we have six uh, authors today from the movies that were screened just before, uh, before our meeting here online. Uh, we have Natasha Graves from Stay Alert, Lucia Anna Illich from 5.4. Then we have Sunchisa Anna Vjeldic from The Person movie title to the person. And then we have Haidarel Safar from Quarantine Vox and Tomas Valkovic and Dejan Miovic from The Summer of Our Lives. Um, we will let them introduce themselves in just a bit, but just a little side note. There's one author, uh, Matiz Shkarians, the author of the movie Brother and Sister. And he actually pre-recorded this video letter. So if uh, this uh, video letter has been uploaded to the playlist called Disaster Times on our YouTube channel, so maybe you watched already, but if you haven't, you can uh, watch uh, his introduction of his uh, film as well. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's kick things off. So my heading, I'm heading my, handing my digital mic now to, the, to Rojana and Tiffan for the Q&A. Take it away. Rojana, Tiffan. Guys, can you hear us? Sorry for this uh, technical trouble. Um, I'm Rosanna. And I'm Tiffen. We are volunteers uh, in Luxus Producta. And we will be your interviewers today. Um, so, enough about us. Um, I would like to invite um, first um, Sunchica. Will you tell us something about yourself, please? Hi. I'm Sunchita and I made this film person. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, right now, uh, I'm in the same uh, village in uh, that I recorded the film. Uh, and I can say about the uh, Luxus Film Festival, it uh, reminds me of uh, nice memories uh, so uh, i feel 
tonight, like uh, I'm in Kresko and uh, I'm glad I didn't miss it. We're glad too. <laughs> So, uh, Natasha, will you be next? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you well. Okay. Uh, my name is Natasha Graves. I'm also a volunteer here at Luxus um, since January. And the film that um, was screened tonight, uh, I made um, during a workshop with film director uh, Boris Petkovic, in which he asked us to show a form of conflict um, that summarized or gave some sort of impression on the times we have been living in this year. So I tried to do um, battle uh, man versus self and also man versus society um, in this corona period. Uh, okay, thank you, Natasha. Um, so, who will be next? Um, Tomas, are you ready to take your part? Okay, I'm ready. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, hello. I need to say something, or you will ask me. No, can, can you introduce yourself? Uh, hello, I'm Tomasz. Uh, I think I know all of you and I'm very, very glad that we are together in this chat. I'm also part of the Luxus Produxia team and, uh, but I, this year I didn't work uh, together on the, I didn't work with the crew on the film festival, but I'm glad that they selected my movie. Um, so, Haidar, can you tell us something about yourself? Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Haidar. I'm from uh, Lebanon, originally from Iraq. And uh, I did this film in the times of the lockdown and quarantine. And uh, I collected some uh, videos from other filmmakers and artists and try to produce uh, one film that could be seen in one eye. So uh, I'm happy to be uh, with Lux's uh, festival and uh, waiting for the uh, chit chat. Thank you. And so we have left uh, Lucia, Anna. Hello everyone, uh, I'm speaking from from Italy, where I'm currently studying. Um, and my movie was made last year when I went from Italy back to Croatia, where I live, uh, because the coronavirus happened and I wanted to be home. Um, and then I used the bad times to make a film about the, all the chaos that was going on at that point. Yeah. OK. Uh... Thank you a lot, everybody. Uh, so maybe we should just kick off with the questions. So, um, yes, uh, so for all of you, uh, the first question will be, how did you come up with um, the idea uh, of your movie in this disaster time? So uh, I, I don't know, uh, Natasha, you can start. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so I came up with the idea for my movie um, because I was looking for a source of internal conflict. And I thought one way in which this arises in this past year is this bombardment of government communications and the confusing and often anxiety inducing messaging they use. So at, uh, in the UK, uh, at that point in time, they were using the slogan, stay alert, which was heavily, heavily criticized in the media and by the public because it wasn't very clear as to what this meant. So it wasn't saying stay at home. It wasn't saying, please, you know, wash your hands or anything. It was like, stay alert. So when you go outside, you must always be like watching for 
what's going to happen to you and I thought that this is going to have a huge impact on people's mental health people's resilience and whether people feel uh, like they have authorship over their lives or that they have to listen to the government or you know this kind of battle with wanting to listen to the news and the media and what people are telling you to do but at the same time they don't know what to tell you to do so you have this internal conflict with yourself where just making simple everyday decisions is like almost catastrophic for you and yeah this was kind of the inspiration for my movie okay so cool so could you tell us a bit more about uh, how uh, did you experience uh, uh, your lockdown in another country? I mean, in Slovenia, not in UK. Yeah, so yeah, I'm from uh, England and obviously experiencing it in Slovenia was very strange because when the lockdown first happened, uh, Slovenia was not giving much advice because they had a new government that just inherited this problem and hadn't really said a lot about travel restrictions. And I had just come back actually from Italy at the start of the lockdown or the start of the pandemic really. And, um, you know, we were following the advice from the UK rather than from Slovenia, just because Slovenia wasn't saying anything. And then it got to this point of who do we listen to? Do we listen to Slovenia, UK, America? Like it was like, I don't know, like I didn't know who, what information to follow, what was right, what was wrong. And I think that we all had this new um, moral dilemmas in our life that we'd never experienced before. Like we never experienced like life or death kind of decisions by just going to the shop, but whether, you know, you're putting someone in danger by not wearing a mask or by seeing your loved one, you're putting them in danger. And I think this was something none of us in the world had experience as a moral uh, issue. So we had no moral script for it. And for me, that was a very interesting period to live through. Uh, so how was, uh, was this uh, movie making a part of your coping or um, what did you want to, um, to express with it? Yeah, so I think the movie making was more of like a distraction. So, I mean, the movie making was like a creative outlet for me. Um, and to do a movie specifically about this for me was very important because I felt like I had a lot of ideas about this um, impact that this has on mental health. And I'm very interested in government communications and in general, like what impact this has upon people. So for me, it was like, rather like a philosophical and creative exercise rather than like, I mean, I personally wasn't so anxious about it. Like I'm more interested in how other people in society are getting impacted by this and seeing it from like this wider perspective. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, so a different way, a different approach to this quarantine we saw in the movie Current Tivox by uh, Hafid. So <clears throat> we wanted to ask you, why did you decide to make this project in the first place? What was your motive? Well, moving from the city to the village in the lockdown, uh, I started to experience different uh, activities actually. And uh, as uh, as a starting point, I st we had, you know, this video Zoom discussions with friends that we're not going to, that we're not seeing anymore. And uh, there is a poet from the South that we, we never cashed up for a long time. And we started talking about uh, the quarantine and stuff. And I just told him, he just posted a video that I really liked. And I told him, why don't we just let's try to make this quarantine video where anybody could give us five seconds. And the conspiracy here that I didn't tell them anything. I just told them, give me five to 10 seconds. That's it, whatever you want. But my experiment was to experience the sound of the quarantine. Because while I was at home 
and uh, seeing what's going on outside. Uh, most of the time there was silence and uh, uh, different sounds you're gonna hear. There's no car sounds, now there's another sound. There's more natural sounds. So I wanted to experience that. And uh, SUS was uh, quarantine box, which is a word I created from quarantine and the Latin word box for the sound. So it's the sound of the lockdown. That's the story. Uh, how did you approach this production and how was it uh, to be in this big collaboration from people around the world? Yeah, I started to be, because like when you're sitting at home with your screen, <laughs> you get to see, it, to talk to your uh, really old friends that you've never seen before. And uh, I started to contact some filmmakers and artists, some dancers and actors. And uh, I really get a good feedback from them, good videos, but I chose uh, the ones that could make a little bit of continuity. And uh, uh, even though I approached uh, Alex Sommer, which is a, a composer from uh, the USA, from his, from his Instagram, I didn't know him, uh, but I told him, this is what I did. I need, I need a bit from your music. And he cooperated and he sends it for free. That's cool, huh? <laughs> uh, how did you make this collaboration work? Like, uh, was the, 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 because the lockdown inspired it, but did the lockdown um, oppose any major difficulties? Uh, not, uh, I don't think so. The lockdown just gave me all that time to sit and edit and work on videos. So it wasn't that bad. Like this film was like produced with the help of my producer who's, who was in Canada at that time. And it was produced actually on my kitchen table. <laughs> uh. And okay, um, but how was uh, the lock lockdown uh, for you personally? Like, uh, of course, in the beginning, it was a little bit of scary because you get scared of something you don't know. And uh, no one had a cure until now. No one had a cure for it. And it's getting everybody. But like when you're alone or you start to connect a little bit with your family more and the... Uh, Naturally speaking, I, I didn't see it that bad. Like apart from people getting sick, I see like uh, the nature is, is taking revenge from, the, from our species because of what we did for centuries. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think uh, the nature got back to us and uh, it made us connect with the uh, our families more, made us see uh, the value of stuff. And uh, even Quarantine Vox is, is, uh, is just like uh, a song of connection. All people from 27 cities in the world just connected together in one film. And this is, this is to me, uh, I think I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, we enjoyed it too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, from one disaster to another, in Zagreb <laughs> this year, um, it was not just coronavirus, but also this earthquake. And we are intrigued today to hear about um, Lucia and Sunchica. Uh, both of your movies are made. Uh, the theme is this uh, earthquake and the coronavirus uh, from, for Sunchica too. So um, Sunchica, we would like to ask you, how, how did it feel to film in this dangerous situation? How did you decide to just pick your camera in the middle of some, uh, some big disaster basically and just go and shoot your stuff? Uh, it is an interesting story, but I wanted to ask uh, 
El Safar while he was talking. Uh, uh, and I'm interesting actually uh, if uh, something someone says uh, during uh, you interview them, can, can we also ask questions? Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Okay, uh, because my questions was uh, my question was uh, a bit technical, but uh, I noticed that uh, El Safar is a bit louder than the other participants. So I uh, I was interesting in uh, what he's recording on. Uh, <laughs> does he have a microphone, El Safar, or uh, or uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. you have a microphone closer to your mouth than? other people have okay but we hear you good at least us here yeah yeah we we hear him good but because uh, we hear him good we hear him too loud uh, and we are all a bit more quiet uh, but his uh, sound is louder okay um, so uh, while uh, the, uh, the earthquake began uh, I was in my room and uh, I was sleeping and uh, it lasted uh, for about, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds. And I wasn't moving because uh, uh, I'm on the fourth floor of an old building. And I realized after a few seconds, it was an earthquake, but uh, I decided not to move because uh, I realized it would be uh, more dangerous than, than just to stay put. Um, I decided immediately to film something. And uh, the, the interesting thing is that uh, uh, when I got out of the building, uh, I took my camera and then I <laughs> called my <laughs> professor, Goran Devic from documentary film from uh, Academy of Dramatic Art. And uh, I, I, I called him and uh, he's uh, my neighbor actually. And I asked him, uh, hey, professor, uh, this is now it. Uh, uh, what's the plan? <laughs> and he asked me, but <laughs> where are you? I said, I'm on the street. I'm filming this. Uh, but where are your parents? What are you doing? Why are you filming? But then I said, but professor, we must do this now. <laughs> this, is, this is our moment. Uh, and he said to me, just go and uh, and uh, get your parents out of the building because uh, now it's not the moment for uh, for filming uh, later on i heard that uh, i heard the story about uh, his moment of uh, earthquake uh, is uh, that he said to his uh, uh, to his girlfriend uh, oh my dear this is it now we're going to hug and uh, if this is the end uh, we will just stay together. So um, I think uh, I acted just uh, uh, the, the way I felt uh, I should. So uh, it's, uh, it, it was uh, a unique moment in uh, which uh, I couldn't repeat uh, the scenes uh, that I filmed. Uh, and uh, I actually, um, I feel sorry that I didn't film more and that uh, it wasn't uh, more technically uh, correct. Uh, maybe it, it couldn't be, but uh, it could be more material. So um, afterwards, I went to this uh, island where I am now. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I filmed this per uh, film person. And... Uh, this material from the earthquake. Uh, I just uh, had it, but uh, didn't know what to do with it because it was not complete. And then uh, the producer of Zagreb Docs uh, asked me to uh, do some introduction to this film. So I thought, oh, now I can use finally this uh, incomplete material from the earthquake. So I made this another, let's say, producer's version of this film person. So this is it. I think take uh, 
I think on this contra contrast between uh, this action, you know, uh, the earthquake, the disaster, and then this person walking there. Um, so uh, how was this creative process of this film? Uh, how did you approach it? And was it different from your other films that you made? Well, I had the, the uh, motivation. Actually, uh, mm, there was uh, that Corona sh uh, short film festival and they asked uh, to, uh, to make a film uh, of five minutes. And um, then I had this material, uh, which I filmed on a bay uh, about this person walking on a bay uh, with a mask and uh, her gloves on, although uh, no one was uh, near to contaminate her. Um, and then I just uh, com compiled it to uh, five minutes and uh, that was it. So that was the creative uh, uh, process was actually uh, motivated by the contest, um, which is uh, actually always uh, a good motivation when, when, when you have some limitations or uh, something to to put your uh, to put your piece into, then uh, then it's easier to act. Thank you. Um, so uh, I have one one more thing we want to ask you. Uh, how is it uh, now? Maybe with lockdown, it's a bit different because um, we know that you have another uh, profession besides filmmaking. Uh, so how do you how do you handle this? Uh, how do you balance you know your movie life and your uh, veterinary uh, profession? Do you have maybe more time for the movies now during lockdown, or it hasn't changed? I have more time uh, for everything, uh, and uh, it's actually a blessing to me uh, because. Uh, I, I don't work anymore as a veterinarian, uh, but uh, my, my friends, uh, veterinarians, uh, they sell me the drugs uh, and uh, other medicines. And then uh, I go uh, uh, to some nearby islands and then I make some uh, spaying of the cats. So. Uh, so sometimes I uh, do it completely for free, sometimes uh, to, um, to make money uh, for the medicines, and sometimes uh, I even make some money. So, and um, I don't work anywhere, like for some boss. So it's, uh, for me, it's a good situation. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, so, moving on uh, back to Slovenia, to the summer of our lives with Tomáš and Dejan. Um, so, this is a very personal movie. And uh, firstly, we are, we are interested, um, did the lockdown, um, did the lockdown uh, uh, inspire you to make this movie? Uh, or did it have any, any kind of... Uh, uh, did, it, uh, did it shape the movie in any way and how? Uh, this is for me or for them? For both of you. <clears throat> uh, I would say here that uh, uh, lockdown uh, just, just uh, gave me some time to edit this, but I think before lockdown, what it was, you should ask Dan what are these photos? Because I edited, but Dan made all these photos and some videos in between. Okay. So, hey guys. Yeah. welcome. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 All right. Um, yeah, I'm a photographer. Uh, I never had uh, anything. Uh, to do with uh, videography and uh, I'm taking photos of my friends for the past 20 years so I have thousands and thousands of them and I just wanted to do something with them um, 
So I, I decided during the lockdown, the first lockdown, to make something out of those huge pile of photos on my computer. And um, I had an idea how it should look at the end, but I didn't know how to do it. And that's why I called Tomas to help me because he has a lot of experience with the production. And um, that's how this, let's say, experimental movie um, was made. But before, before it was also idea was already before when you had this exhibition in Reichenburg Castle. But then it, we didn't do it. So then this lockdown was like some kind of excuse that we have time and let's do it now. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we would like to know uh, at what moment and why did you decide uh, to to make uh, uh, the story of you and your friends um, live uh, public? Okay, uh, I have uh, quite a story. Um, Exactly 10 years ago, I had uh, quite a bad accident. I fell on a slippery slope while going into the sea. Um, the slippery slope was uh, um, full of algae and uh, it was very slippery. So I fell on my forehead and ended up um, completely paralyzed from neck down. So I had an, ex uh, I had an uh, operation uh, on my neck and um, the news from the doctors were really not uh, good at all. They said, I'm gonna be paralyzed until the rest of my life. Uh, but luckily um, uh, after half a year, okay, I was, Three months I was paralyzed. I couldn't move nothing uh, except my head. Uh, and after three months, my, my body, my functions start to get back to life. So after six months, I started to do first steps. So it, uh, I was really lucky. Um, and a friend of mine made um, a year and a half after my accident, made a documentary, short documentary about me. And I asked her if I can use some clips in my movie. And she said, yes. And I just wanted to show, um, in a very small um, time frame, five minutes, um, how I spent my 20 years, last last 20 years. So um, this was the basic idea. Uh, what was your friend's reaction when they saw the movie? Uh, uh, I, I, I got um, really good uh, reactions because most of the people know me uh, uh, who, who saw that movie, uh, most of them know me and um, I, I still think it's an inspirational story. Um, so I, th I think it was... Um, nice reaction from the people who saw the movie. Okay, and how it is to work uh, with your friends uh, on a filmmaking? Excuse me, I, I didn't hear you. How it is to, to work with your friends um, in a filmmaking? Um, 
I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, they, 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 um, they didn't uh, have uh, any uh, problems with it. I mean, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't understand you well. Uh, what's with my friends? Sorry. No, I was asking uh, since uh, Tomas and you uh, were working on the same project, how it was, how it is to work uh, with your friends uh, in the same project. Oh no, that, that's great. That's a perfect combination because um, he's in videography for almost half of his, his life, and I'm uh, in photography. More, more than half of my life so it's a perfect combination and uh, it was um, um, I mean connection was was uh, immediate um, we just uh, uh, get uh, a few a few ideas of how how everything should should look like and um, then we just needed time to do it and we had a lot of time because of lockdown and here it is. And how did you choose the title, Summer of Our Lives? Um, title, uh, actually I had an exhibition two years ago uh, with the same title, but on this exhibition, it was only 48 photos and in this movie, it's more than 500 photos. And um, I, uh, I like the title because um, it's a reflection of um, past 20 years, let's say, since I, I started uh, to go to faculty until now. Um, and um, it's one summer of our whole life. It's it's not um, how should I say? It's not literal, but uh, it means um, the best the best years of our lives from twenty to forty, and um, you see uh, a lot of parties, a lot of friends uh, in different places. A lot of memories, uh, a lot of uh, uh, happy moments, and in all of this, also my my accident, which was a reality check. So I think it's a good combination. Yeah. Sorry, have... guys. Sorry, guys. I would just like to jump in quickly. Okay. Uh, I have a. I have to tell Diane, I have to thank you for sharing your story because when I watched the movie, I had no idea you are actually also the one who went through this um, um, like crazy, yeah. ac crazy accident. So thank you for sharing with us. And um, I was wondering, I mean, you, you told us about the summer of our lives, like the movies about the past and you kind of relearning how to walk. So how are you now? Like what is the season of life you're in now? Okay, uh, very quickly. Now um, I'm still uh, um, my my spine is still uh, um, not functioning one hundred percent, but I can walk. Uh, I walk quite uh, robotically. I can't walk uh, more than two kilometers because I got really tired. Uh, my hands uh, are. I would say my whole body is is on seventy percent, so I I can do a lot of things, but not everything. I can move, I can walk, I can grab things, but a lot of things still don't work. And I guess maybe when when uh, medicine is going uh, medicine is going to get uh, even more. Um, uh, even better, maybe they, they they will find a cure or operation or something. But for now, um, it is like it is. But uh, I'm fine with it. I, I learned uh, how to live with it, and I don't have any problems. 
Yeah, I, I also just wanted to add that uh, you beat the statistics anyway, you know, of like uh, all the predicted uh, chances. Yeah. So you're a, you're a fighter. Thanks for yeah. sharing. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Dan, really, for sharing the story. And we hope uh, you just get better and better. Um, so now we, we have left uh, Lucia uh, with the film 5.4. Um, so Lucia, if you're still with us. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Um, OK, uh, so how was it for you? To film this, uh, to film this thing, um, a bit different than Sonchitsa, who was filming at the at the event happening, and uh, you took a bit different approach. So, uh, why did you choose this approach, and why? How did you decide to make a film? Like, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so the idea was born actually a few days after the earthquake happened because. Uh, in the first place, I wasn't supposed to be at, in Zagreb at that time because I was there by because of coronavirus. And me and a friend who also, he was the camera person, Mark Modric, for the film. We were here in Italy studying film and he had a car. So we like sat in the car on the day when Italy uh, announced that there will be a national lockdown because at that point of time, we still didn't know what it meant and what would the consequences be and how uh, serious the whole thing is but it seemed pretty serious so we we sat in the car drove to uh, Zagreb and we went straight into the self-isolation um, and I think it was like the earthquake happened two days before the self-isolation was supposed to be over so I spent like 12 days closed in my room and then that Sunday I wake up and everything is shaking and because I couldn't see any friends, nobody except for my mom, um, I started talking with them and asking them like how, how they were coping with uh, all the emotions and the stress after the earthquake. And then I asked a few of them if they could maybe record their voices because this was also a part of the exercise I had to do for my university at that time. And then I started thinking, okay, now we can maybe go out and maybe we, he should take the camera so we can walk around the town just to see also what the consequences are and how everything looks. And the streets were still empty. There were no, no people, just the workers and some passers-by. Um, so like we, do, we were walking around the streets and then I was um, interested in some some buildings that looked um, in a very, that were in a bad state. So we also went in inside of some buildings, um, trying not like taking care that something doesn't fall on our heads because it was still unclear what's like, what's safe and what isn't. Um, and then after that, I sat um, behind my computer and started like going through the material and started searching for a story or how I could merge the two. So the experience that my friends had and with the visual part. Yeah. Okay, and how did you find um, the characters would uh, do the voice uh, voices at the beginning? They were mostly people that are close to me, like a group of closer or maybe a bit uh, like acquaintances and friends that so they each of them like they took their mobile phones or if somebody had zoom for recording at home they they were because we were all at home we couldn't meet and then they sent me the file and I listened there were many more but I chose like um, the ones that I could connect kind of yeah Okay, thank you. Um, so do you have any other projects uh, planned now? 
Uh, at the moment, I'm working just for on things for university, which take a lot of time. But as Sunchitsa said, actually the coronavirus here uh, kind of helped, not helped me, but um, I think it's a better, better let's, situation is better because um, I got a computer from school, so at home, so I can work from home because we have online lessons now. So kind, I spend kind of the the half of the day, most of the day behind it, trying to work for university most of the time, yeah. I have, sorry, I have one question for you as well. Uh, as your movie kind of um, uh, captured the sort of immediate reactions, you know, just right after the earthquake, have you talked with the same people now, maybe in, like a few months later, um, how are they feeling about this? Um, Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, it's a, it's a good question because, of course, we talked also like during the summer and uh, I don't know, in May and in June about the whole thing because the earth st was still shaking in some parts of Zagreb and a few of them live uh, near the, uh, the epicenter, so they could still feel some smaller earthquakes, but I guess it's just like uh, the human mind or the human situation when when your brain kind of gets used to this happen because the first time was really uh, scary but later on it kind of you get used to waking up with maybe a smaller earthquake or going to to bed and feeling the ground shake but of course everybody's hoping that like another um, bigger uh, earthquake earthquake uh, wouldn't happen again Yeah, I mean, we can we can only hope, right? And um, I have Sunchitsa here who wanted to ask a question for uh, Dayan, who has a question for Dayan. So go ahead. I watched a movie from uh, Ivan Ramljak. I don't know if uh, you heard about that movie. Uh, no. It's, uh, no. It's called, um, I, I think in translation, about the youth. Uh, and uh, it uh, reminded me of your movie because it's uh, all based of uh, archive uh, photographs. And um, the main character is uh, his late friend uh, who was a professional photographer, uh, <clears throat> but who uh, tragically died. And uh, he wanted to depict uh, some period from their past from their together past. And uh, it was like uh, made from uh, all these uh, beautiful photographs as I, as also in your films, a film. Um, and um, I was just wondering, uh, uh, this is a very nice film you made, uh, but uh, um, uh, the, interviewers uh, had a lot of questions and uh, it aroused a lot of questions about uh, about you, about uh, what so uh, with you and uh, what's the story behind this. Uh, I'm not suggesting uh, anything uh, like uh, you should make another film, but uh, actually I am because uh, um, uh, I think, uh, mm, a lot of people would be interesting, interested in uh, uh, the background story. Have you ever thought uh, that uh, you, you make some kind of uh, background story uh, in the form of um, uh, adding uh, voiceover or something like that? Because... Um, uh, no, actually, I never thought about it, but uh, now, as you mentioned it, uh, uh, it makes sense. Um, I have to talk with Tomas. Yeah, because uh, um, we all have um, all kind, kinds of stories and, and, and we think uh, they're more powerful uh, just uh, by displaying the... Uh, the pictures and uh, not telling uh, everything, uh, but uh, 
uh, that element of voiceover really, really, uh, in some cases, uh, really adds to something. And uh, um, I really felt that uh, your story has a potential for for this, not to make a copycat of uh, this, but everyone uh, always in film schools, uh, they refer, when, when you start make, uh, making a, a movie, they, they always ask you, uh, what's your reference? Did you watch this film? Uh, did you watch that film? Uh, did you ever uh, think of uh, this? Uh, and uh, it's uh, already in uh, in our mind, uh, everyone who is into film, that uh, when we watch some kind of material, uh, uh, we immediately get references in our head. So um, I just wanted to make a suggestion because um, mm, I thought maybe uh, it has some uh, bigger potential and it Thank would be you. Thank you. This um, was... Uh really nice and this is very nice as it is but this movie just... got premiere like month ago or something no? like... uh this from Ivan Ramljak you think yeah yeah what? uh it had a premiere on um uh prison docs uh, was oh, okay. there Ah, okay, you watch it there. And it, and it uh, gained the gr Grand Prix on uh, Dani Hrvatskog Filma. <laughs> oh, okay. Creation okay. Film Day. I'll definitely yeah. check it out. Yeah. And the photos are uh, really rememberable, your photos, I think. This is like Zagreb in the 90s, or no? Yeah. And it's a different story. It's uh, the, his friend uh, tragically died because uh, he was uh, uh, because he was a heroin addict. Uh -huh. So it's a completely different story, but it's also an archive. Yeah, film. definitely. I'll check it out and, and uh, get some inspiration out of it, and we'll see with yeah. Tomas what we can do. Yeah, a better film. Then with a stronger message. <laughs> but guys, this is great. Like new proposals, new possible yeah, yeah, yeah. collaborations, you know, <laughs> are born in the, within the Luxus Festival. Um, but I have a question from you viewers actually for uh, Luciana. Uh, and actually, yeah, and it interests me as well. So why 5.4? Because that was the magnitude of the earthquake like the the strongest one okay. the first one that woke us all up and for us who are not really familiar you know with all these terms where is this on this um somewhere uh, somewhere in the middle i think that after six richters most buildings not like uh, the buildings in this one part of zagreb which is called new zagreb Novi zagreb they were they were built after the earthquake in um okay. skopje in 1968, I think, or something like this. And after that, the um, construction be began to be like, they, they put more money and more investments into building uh, proper buildings that would kind of um, not crash after an earthquake. So most, uh, most buildings in this new part are built to, like in my building where I live, I live in a skyscraper. So I was just like moving from left to right because I'm on the third, third floor, 13th floor. Um, but apart from that, like there were some small scratches, but nothing, nothing was uh, ruined as in the city center, which was, on, which was constructed in like 19th century mostly and 20th century. So, um, yeah, I think Chile has like daily earthquakes between six and eight. So, and it's, it grows exponentially. That's important to say, but yeah. I mean, cause this is, this is definitely a very traumatic experience for anyone involved. So I was thinking how was working you that, with them? You know, you mentioned before that they, um, they, you asked them to, to, for the recordings, but how was like the whole process of in being involved with them, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, some of them, like uh, there were a few people who actually it was mentally so challenging, uh, so they couldn't do it, so that they couldn't 
record themselves talking about it because it was still a very traumatic moment and maybe they haven't gone uh, through it on their own or like didn't take enough time to go and to process what happened. So I said, of course, like, no problem. You don't have to do it. Like I wouldn't push anybody to do it. But uh, apart from that, like most of them were kind of um, not happy, but maybe found the idea also um, good for their mental health because they had the opportunity to talk, to talk about a traumatic experience. And there is like some friends from this Facebook group, like uh, we have a, uh, um, a, an inbox in the messenger. So we were writing there how each of us experienced it and kind of sharing our, um, yeah, the whole situation. Um, and I guess it made it easier for us to cope with yeah, the event. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But have you found any um, like patterns throughout their answers? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, most of them like were using a lot of verbs to and um, adjectives to describe this sound that was like very very deep and I don't know. I never heard such a deep bass, bass like like as if the earth was opening and. The, the important thing to mention is that we were all asleep. So it wasn't like you were doing something and then in the middle of, I don't know, eating lunch. So you are aware that you are, you are awake that this happens, but like you wake up also for me, like I woke up and for the first three or four seconds, I, I, my brain it took some time to like recognize what was going on because it never experienced this before. So I was really confused, like, you wake up and I remember uh, trying to um, see what's going on and then suddenly I scream because that's, I guess, the natural reaction. Um, I don't know, like my mom, she was super confused and she, she started like cleaning up around the flat and I was like, mom, we have to go out of the building. So you all, there were also people who paralyzed and they didn't know what to do. Like, do you go out, do you stay in? What do you take? Where do you go then? So a lot of people went to these like fields where there are no buildings, where they felt um, safe. A lot of people left Zagreb immediately, like Sunčica did, which is also quite a natural reaction. And then there's also this like whole coronavirus situation because it was as well the first day of like official lockdown. Yeah. Sorry, I, th I heard there, there was someone else saying something, but you mentioned this lockdown and I think we can all agree that this 2020 is this crazy year that uh, we can only hope it's not going to repeat itself in this shape or form. And I have a question for all of you who are here uh, with us tonight. So what do you think, like, where is this film making sphere and industry going? And maybe if you refer to your own countries as well. So how this crisis kind of um, affected it and the film industry, what's your opinion, and also you personally as a filmmaker? Sunchita, do you have any takes on this? Um, well, I think um, it might be a problem for um, fiction film industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. I think that uh, for documentary um, authors, maybe uh, mm, it should be a note that uh, like uh, it was a note uh, from the start that uh, when you make a documentary, then uh, it is actually an ethical thing that uh, your presence uh, is noted and you should not hide it. And this time uh, it's almost uh, impossible to hide it. So it's uh, kind of uh, a time in, uh, in which uh, like uh, you have to be more sincere. Mm -hmm. it, you're just made to be that way. Haider, do you have any uh, opinions on this as well? Or maybe describe some your situation in Lebanon? Uh, 
Well, I think uh, for fiction, uh, I also write uh, uh, fiction and I write uh, for uh, local series. Uh, the, the platforms now are getting more popular while the cinema houses are closed, as you know. So uh, I think uh, there should, be, uh, it's gonna be a different kind of media. Like if, if somebody, like uh, the, the, uh, there is a, a Netflix series called Orthodox. It was supposed to be a film before, but to produce it this way, to, to keep it in the, in the uh, platforms, Netflix, mm. so they, they cut it, they edit it, and they dramatize it to be a miniseries. I think that's where it's going in fiction. For indie filmmaking, it's uh, totally different. Uh, I think more funds are going uh, to, the, to the indie channel. And do you, would you, do you have like a main arg argument for why is that so? Well, because the, like the big budget movies, they, they, uh, they need audience. They need people who eat popcorn and drink uh, uh, Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. And they, they hire the seat where they pay their money. Now this seat is forbidden for anybody to sit in. There's no cinemas. So uh, I think for, for uh, uh, independent filmmakers, uh, now it's the time to put their names on the line. I hope everybody heard him, strong words. <laughs> and Tomas and Dayan, what do you think? I don't know. For now I have a lot of work. But we will see what the future will bring. Then, as a photographer, maybe from your point of view. Uh, I don't know. Really, uh, it's a difficult time for photographers. Um, I think everywhere in the world right now. Uh, they they have to be uh, out and taking photos, but they are in the same time uh, because of that very vulnerable. So um, and even though we have restrictions, they, they go out and they risk uh, getting sick or if they go, I mean, it's, it's a difficult time for photography right now, I think. It's, um, and I don't know what the future will bring right now. Have you seen the news? Um, I mean, you probably heard the news from last week when there was this, uh hooligan uh, outburst in Ljubljana and this photographer was injured. So do you have any yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I know him. I know his father because uh, his father works for Reuters and now he took over uh, and um, he's working for Reuters right now and um, I don't like where this is going um, but on the other hand, I understand people are sick of all those rules of being at home and um, they have to, I don't know, they have to get this anger out, but um, definitely it's not the, the right way and um, um, aggression is uh, not acceptable in any way. Yeah, on one hand, I think we are exposed more. And then on the other hand, we also, we're inside anyways. Um, we spend more time inside and therefore also online. So I was wondering, what are your thoughts? Like whoever wants to speak now about um, all the festivals now moving online, everything getting digital format. Um, 
how do you see this and the future of the festivals as well? Well, yeah. I, I think that films and also like Q and A's and uh, conversations with authors will be um, like more uh, not approachable, but um, like you can the access will the access will be easier to get to them. So to speak to them, to maybe ask questions, to see how how they approach their work, or to find out something about from their private lives. And for me, like this is a really a huge plus. Also, all the master classes that are held online, and you don't have to be there in present. And like, and you can watch um, movies from the festivals for a few euros. I mean, and now the question is also like, how much? Um, what should the price be of of the ticket? Because you don't have the whole cinema experience, but you can watch it from your home. And I think this is like, I spoke a few days ago with a friend, with a colleague from university here about the future of cinema. If there's anything that will ever come into place of, of cinema and of the experience of watching a movie with like hundred other people. And in my opinion, it very, it's very difficult to find a proper um, like surrogate for this experience, but we will see, yeah. And from your similar generation, Natasha, what do you think? Is your view similar to uh, Lucia's? Um, yes, I think that definitely online festivals are more accessible uh, to the wider population. It disseminates the information more widely. Mm. However, I feel like it could stunt discussion because when you have a film festival or something like in between the screenings, this is the place for discussion for um, the, the, the opportunity also to network with the filmmakers and all of this kind of thing is taken away. So I think that that is a massive impact uh, on the film festival's uh, potential and also for these young filmmakers to, you know, network and uh, meet people and share ideas. I think that that is something that is lacking, but it does make the, the information more widely accessible, which is, is, a, is a benefit, obviously. But um, yes, negative is the social uh, situations that uh, will be taken away. But we can try as much as we can, like we are, to keep these discussions alive <laughs> in these online spaces. Yeah, we are trying this year hard at Luxus Production. Hey, Tomasz, do you think there's ever going to be a summer of, uh, summer of the festival? Is it going to be back? I hope. I mean, for me, as an author, I visited a lot of festivals and I think you can't... I mean, the, the the main thing is to meet people, you know, to to chat, to talk, to have a beer, you know. I I don't know if if we will have all the chats for, during festivals do, through Zoom. I I can't imagine this. You know, I hope this is just for some time, not forever. I mean. We will dance together soon, I hope. <laughs> uh, guys, does anyone have any questions for uh, about anything for whoever in this group? Uh, Tifen and Rojana, do you have any other uh, stuff that you wanted to ask? No, 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 it's uh, kind of, uh, yeah, uh, really complete. So me, no, me. I think that I, that, I, oh. yeah. I, I just wanted to add to the question you asked um, earlier about the impact of uh, this situation on filmmaking. On, on one, on one uh, hand, this, um, this times we live in decreases the supply of films because obviously it's harder, you know, to access the funds to access. Uh, subjects to move around and all of this things but on the same time we need movies more than ever right now to connect each other and you know we're stuck at home we're stuck inside what's everyone doing everyone's watching netflix 
Um, so it's like now more than ever, we need our stories to be shared and we need people to be making films. So I think on that angle, it could be a huge positive in, in terms of, you know, that we want to consume other people's stories more. And we also have the ability to share our stories more because we have more time to reflect and think about uh, our own stories and, and things we want to share. And I, I found personally that that's happened to me a lot during these uh, this, this year uh, with all of the things that are happening. It's made me reflect on myself and my position in society and things that are happening. So yeah, I think it could also be a, a positive for sure. Yeah, I think that's also connected to Haider's um, short movie quite a lot, you know, with the quarantine and seeing uh, people in the same like position and then kind of uh, when you see the movie, you see that we are global uh, anyways, you know, or what do you think, Haider? Haider? Are you I here? think uh, uh, this and uh, since March and April uh, and uh, uh, like <clears throat> this this year approximately uh, we, we we start we are experiencing something new so uh, the, the the connection is uh, very necessary for us to try to create new media maybe uh, a, a new platform uh, actually, here in Lebanon, uh, some uh, indie filmmakers, they started to do a platform, not like Jet Netflix or something, something big, but for uh, independent filmmakers who cannot find uh, uh, a market for them to, to uh, show and present their films. So uh, it's called Aflamuna, and this, this uh, platform is showing all... Uh, some of the uh, experimental uh, uh, films that uh, were produced uh, in that specific time. And uh, I think that uh, it's a new thing for us and we need to experience. I love how all of your sentences end with this motivational, you know, um, <laughs> thing. So there's, a, there's something there for sure. Um, if there are no any other questions, then I think we uh, we will wrap it up for tonight. Um, uh, we already had quite a quite a long discussion, but thank you to all the filmmakers and um, especially to our guests, of course, for uh, taking the time and coming here and joining this. Hopefully, just uh, you know, a passing form of the festival. So in in the online and. All of these sessions, uh, or especially this session today, will be recorded and available online. So if you know anyone who would like to watch it, uh, uh, if you know anyone who would like to watch it, um, yeah, uh, you can just uh, point them at our uh, to our YouTube channel. And then also all of the movies that were premiered in the last week and also today will be available until the end of the festival. So you can go and rewatch your your work or works of others as many times as you would like. Um, so just what is coming now tomorrow. So this week we are quite busy. We have something every day from today to Saturday. Uh, tomorrow we have a section of the program called the Art of Resilience. So definitely something that is strong in the name already. Uh, we are meeting here at the same time. So same place, same time, 8.30 on Facebook for the discussion, then and an hour earlier. So 7.30 on YouTube to watch the movies. So um, that's it for today, guys. Uh, give us a like, follow us on Facebook. We're at uh, Luxus Produkcia on Facebook and at Luxus.Produkcia uh, on Instagram. So gi give us a like even more. Give us your opinion. That's way better. And yeah, um, follow us so you will get all the updates. So thank you. Thank you again. And then hopefully see you tomorrow. Have a nice evening, guys. Ciao. Thank you for hosting us. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Yeah.